Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to get rid of rats and mice. In particular, it is the Norway rat and the roof rat, and then just the house mouse. Right, so I've got some pellets here. I have uh, some food. Now this is a trick I use in order to get rid of these rats and mice. Now there are lots of different brands that make these pesticides, but rather than promoting a brand here, I'm actually promoting a process that I follow in solving this problem. So what I do is I take food. This is maize meal, so it's a porridge of sorts. And if I leave this out, it will actually get mold on it and it will go off. So what I'm saying is that I found this works with food that perishes. If it's food that doesn't perish, it doesn't work as well. If you've got some stale muffins laying around or some stale cake, that can also be used. I do prefer a porridge type substance because it's easier to get the pellets to stick inside. So I've got my maize meal here and then I've got uh, these muffin holders. So these are just paper muffin holders and what I do is I make a little rat mooty, which I'll demonstrate quickly. Now it is advised to use examination gloves when doing this because this is poisonous. Now here are my pellets and I'm just going to open these little bags and just pour them into this bucket. Right, now if you are trying to get rid of mice, we need between 15 and 20 grams of poison in one of these little holders. So these paper muffin holders, I'm just showing you, I've got a little scale here, and that is about 15 grams. Now, if you want to see 20 grams, that's about 20 grams worth of poison or pellets, and this over here is about 40 grams of pellets. Now, the reason why I'm showing that is if we're getting rid of mice, well, then I only need to put less of the poison in the mix. If I'm trying to get rid of rats, well, then I need to put more of the pellets. So in my case, I'm actually trying to get rid of mice and rats. So I'm going to go with about 30 grams of pellets in one of these muffin holders. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now mix the milli meal or the maize meal with the pellets and put it in one of these muffin holders. Right, so I'm going to fill these to about halfway to make up that 30 to 40 grams. Right, so I have my poison now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the maize meal with the poison. That just gives me an idea of how much poison there should be. Right, so all I'm doing is I'm emptying the poison in there. I'm taking some of the maize meal. I'm mixing the pellets and the maize meal together. Right, so the first one is now complete. Right, so I've made my poison muffins and I highly recommend that you put them in containers. For example, something like this it must have a warning because we don't want children or animals to eat this. Now over here, I've got a plastic box here and what I'll do is I'll insert one of these inside here, the rat or the mouse runs through here and it might want to eat that food. This stops other animals from eating the poison. Over here I've got this box and there was an older poison and you can see that it has been eaten and now I'll put a new one inside here. Now if possible try to have a few of these and install these along the walls and in sheltered areas where you know you have the rats or mouse or where you've heard them. For mice we want them to be installed quite close so about two to five meters while for rats they can be installed further apart. Now one can also take these and put these under a fridge for example just like that just under a fridge, under a cupboard, just like that. The rats like this paper and you'll even hear them eating it. You'll hear the paper crinkling. Please be very careful with these pellets. If they fall on the floor, birds sometimes eat them or animals and they can be poisoned. After the poison has taken effect, you might see some sluggish rats or mice walking around. Try to catch them as quick as possible because we don't want owls or other birds to eat the rat or the mouse because then it might kill the bird. Here's an example of the placement of this box. Notice it's against the wall, the poison put inside. So on the inside of the lid, one can see there's actually a sticker and one can write the date. And I do recommend that, especially if it's a bad infestation, about every two weeks, check the poison.
close the lid and then other animals cannot access that poison. Here's another one placed specifically where I've seen rats running. Over here is an outdoor shed, also a good place to put your rat and mouse poison. Also in the ceiling, and then over here we've got a cupboard and if it's enclosed enough, you can just put the poison directly there without being in the container, also at the back of fridges. So places where uh, children and animals cannot get to, but where rats frequent. So if you've moved the furniture and you've seen droppings, then you know that this is a place where rats or mouse have been walking around. All right, thanks for watching.